So now in the HSL color grayscale section here on the right, we have got hue, saturation and luminance options. And we've also got a button for selecting all of them together if we want. I find that a little bit overpowering. It looks like a it looks like the, the flight deck of an aeroplane to me that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start off uh, working with the luminance values. Uh, and this is going to make things lighter and darker. Um, and I think what the way uh, there are a couple of ways of doing this, um, and it's a little bit difficult for me to show you the approach I took on this original image because this original image I I did in a series of stages. Um, I did on this image what I always tell you you should do yourselves. I did some work. I walked away. I came back and looked at it and decided whether or not I liked what I'd done, um, and I made some more changes. And then I went away again, and I came back and made some more changes. So. Um, it's difficult to turn it into a sort of a coherent tutorial that says do this, do this, do this, and here's how you get there. What instead I'm going to do um, is is show you the sort of techniques I was using, and then I'm going to sort of uh, give you a, a a once down the list how a way of, of how I actually did it. So um, I think I've showed you this before. The um, this little uh, targeting tool here on the right. If I click on that and you get the little arrows up and down. That now gives us the ability to mouse over the image, click, and drag up and down, and affect the luminosity of whatever colours we've got the mouse over. So as I'm dragging down, you can see it's darkening those oranges, and as I drag up, you can see it's lightening those oranges. And so we can do that by targeting whatever area of the image we want to work on. If I click on the green, I can lighten the green, I can darken the green. And you can see as, as I mouse over the image, if you look here on the right, you can see all these colours. They've split, split it up into red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. Um, and as I mouse over, you can see it lighting up the colour I'm pointing at. So we can see where, because sometimes these colours are, are relative, and sometimes what looks to us like yellow might actually be closer to a green, or might actually be closer to an orange. And so sometimes our eyes don't deceive us. Uh, you know what what Lightroom is doing here for us is letting us see for sure, and that definitely is a green, and this definitely is a blue. You know, and this over here is a yellow, and just on the side of the castle here we have some orangey parts and some yellowy parts, and that's useful information to know. Is just mousing over it is useful to, to let us see which of these sliders we're going to want to work with. Now I've I've been clicking and dragging there in ways that I don't want, so you can always reset a tool in, in Lightroom by pressing the Option or Alt key down, and when you do you can see this luminance changes to Reset Luminance, and if I click on that it resets all of those sliders back to zero. So what I actually want to do here is I want to in increase the definition in those clouds again, so let's start off by looking at the, the blue here in the sky and let's just drag that down a little bit and uh, I'm looking for somewhere you know what they as you can see as I drag that down it's increasing the it's decreasing the brightness of those blues in the sky so we're increasing the definition in those clouds and I, I'm looking somewhere around about there for my for my cloud definition um, also coming over here you can see in certain areas the mouse is flashing on purple and magenta. Now I really don't want any purple and magenta in my sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the hue slider, the hue section, and I'm just going to drag the purple and magenta, sorry, not the hue section, I do apologize, the, uh, let's play that back, the saturation section, and I'm going to drag the saturation of purple and magenta all the way down to zero. So, so that those are just completely desaturated, so they'll be gray, basically. Um, because I don't want any purple or, or, or magenta, and there's there's clearly no purple or magenta in the ground. If you if you want to see where these areas are, by the way, drag them up to maximum, and you can start to see it's it's here around the edges of the clouds, and it's just around the edge there we started to get maybe a little bit of colour. Uh, maybe that the white balance isn't quite right, but but we've got a bit of those uh, purples and magentas coming in. So I'm just going to drag those back down to zero, and I'm going to go back to my luminance data. And I'm just going to quickly drag those values up and down and see if I can see what it's doing to, to the definition in my clouds. Now, um, what I don't want is to have hard hard lines around the edges of things. So let's zoom in on that area of the cloud there, where I know that these values are coming in, and just drag something down. If I drag that magenta down, I, I don't know whether you can see this on the video, but there's on my screen quite a visible line around some of the, the areas of colour there. And I can probably 
to soften it a little bit by dragging the other adjacent colours up and down a little bit. But what I actually want to do is just, I want to increase the definition in the clowns like that. And it, you often find that you sometimes, that you need these sliders here in these uh, HSL sliders not to go too wildly apart. So, uh, you know, blue's gone down. I don't want purple to go right up. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to get these lines. So it is sometimes worth just trying to keep these things in a sort of a smooth curve. So zooming back out, um, hopefully we've just increased the... Remember, we can turn these, these sections on or off by using the little... A little on off switch is next to the next to the group so we can see that that turning that section on or off is already increasing the, de the detail in the sky and is giving us some some more definition up in those clouds just up there so let's start looking at our oranges and yellows and greens let's start on the greens the green here on the ground um, is uh, is very strong I'm going to reduce the saturation but maybe we can also reduce the um, uh, the brightness value just to increase our our tonality that little bit more. So if I drag this up and down you can see what it's doing to the ground there. I don't want it down that much. Let's just settle on somewhere around the 25 mark, something like that. So around about there. And then let's look at our oranges and yellows. Um, the orange is going to affect the side of the castle, I know that much already. So we're looking on the side of the castle here and there's going to be some oranges in here as well. And what I want to do with the orange is probably just brighten it up a little bit. As I brighten it up it, it tends to bring out a little bit of the detail on the side of the castle here and it's generally making this light feel like it's starting to to shine from this part of the sky which is rather nice. Um, and I think we'll just push the uh, uh, the yellow up just a touch as well just to just to keep this, this curve smooth here. Um, I don't think we want to do anything necessarily with the reds yeah, the red's not really affecting the image at all. I'm just dragging it up and down. Can't see any change. Um, what I tend to do with, with with sliders that are making no change to the image, I tend to leave them in the middle or make them part of the surrounding curve. And I think, what do I want to do with the aqua? Let's just see what the aqua, because it's the only one I haven't messed with now. Let's see what the aqua does for us. That's um, an adjacent colour to the blue. I can just bring out maybe a little bit of the um, uh, the, the the detail in the sky just by separating it a little bit from the blue. I don't want to push those too far apart again otherwise I'll get um, I'll start breaking up that detail in the sky and it'll start getting lines in it which is not what I want. So I think that's a pretty good stage for our luminance to be set out. Let's quickly work on our saturation. We've already done the purple and magenta. Um, now uh, our oranges. I, I definitely want there to be much more light flowing through this image. I want that uh, orangey light to be sort of sort of almost like treacle flowing down the hill here and hitting the side of that castle. So I'm going to start just dragging the orange upwards a little bit. Um, let's be brave. Let's go up quite a lot. Um, and then let's mess around with the yellow just a little bit as well. Let's just see what that does for us. And now that affects, look at what that does. If I drag the yellow right up all of a sudden we get a really rich sort of golden here on the on the path. If I drag it right down, it, it goes it goes almost cold. I mean that in itself is is not unpleasing actually. It's quite quite nice. But again, I had an I had an objective for this image. I know what I set out to do, and that's what I'm going to try and aim for. So in this case, I'm going to let the let the yellow go up a little, um, and I'm going to probably just drag that green down a little bit. Um, let's just see where that takes us. If I drag it down. Um, that's probably a little too much. Let's drag that back up just a bit. Um, and what I'm trying to do with the green, because the green is the predominant colour at the bottom here, I'm trying to separate it from the yellow so that the yellow is is nicely visible and distinct from the green. I want it to look like the light is sort of sort of catching this bit of the ground in particular. And I also want to balance off the the uh, saturation of the colour in the sky against the saturation of the colour in the ground. Otherwise the, we're going to lose balance in this image and it's got to be, um, remember we, we need side to side balance and in this case we've got the castle balancing the light here on the right because this is a much brighter part of the image. So we have a subject that sort of starts us here and then and we've got uh, a, a sort of smooth flowing lines of light through here and we've got the, the, the uh, repetition and resonance of those lines in the sky um, and top to bottom balance as well so hopefully we're getting the uh, the tonalities closer together and we're getting the saturations closer together and this castle that sort of leads you from one section of the image to the other.
Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.